Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thanks for checking out the channel. Today, I wanted to discuss something that seems to be increasing every week, every day, every year. And I'm not talking about the size of my wallet or my Roth IRA. I'm talking about battery capacity. And more specifically, I'm seeing it pop up where you used to see something like an advertised rating of 1800 milliamp hours or 2200 milliamp hours. You're now starting to see 3,200 milliamp hours or 8,000 milliamp hours or 20,000 milliamp hours all on one single HT battery. Now, how could these claims be true? Today, I want to go ahead and discuss specifically the Baofeng UV9R Plus battery because some of the claims I got with it when I got it were outrageous. We're going to see what the battery really is for capacity and kind of just discuss along the ways on things you should look out for when you see some of these outrageous claims. Let's get started. Amateur radio news, reviews, and tech overviews. This is Ham Radio Dude. When taking into consideration purchasing a handy talkie or HT, a handheld radio, we need to consider the source of where we're looking to purchase this radio from. But let that not be the ultimate final say whether the specifications listed on the description are actually accurate. Take, for example, and I'll show you a couple of different sites, but Wish.com. This is a Baofeng UV9R Plus, and this radio, which I happen to have right here, has been advertised so many different ways. One of the ways you see it advertised is 15 watts and 8,000 milliamp hours or 8 amp hours. Now you're telling me that this battery right here has 8,000 milliamp hours. But the problem is, is people are persuaded to believe that this is true. And even with data to back it up, they won't believe that this battery is not 8,000 milliamp hours or eight amp hours. So what do we have to do to show people otherwise? Well, let's take a look at some of the other claims on specifically this radio. Here you're gonna see the 2021 upgraded Baofeng UV9R Plus, and you can see they upgraded it because now it's a whole whopping 18 watts, but all of a sudden you see the battery capacity went down to 1200 milliamp hours or 1.2 amp hours. It's still advertised in the description as 8,000 milliamp hours. So you got to be careful because first of all, they're claiming that it's 8,000 milliamp hours, and then you see the latest greatest one and it's 1200 milliamp hours, but then if you look in the description, it's like 8,000 again. And it's not just Wish.com. Let's take a look at LI Express. As you can see here, there's an advertisement of a 4,800 milliamp hour battery, not to mention a 10 watt radio now. So we've seen a few different power levels as well. And an IP68 rating, which I won't actually discuss too far because I have submerged the UV9R Plus into water and it actually did surprisingly well. Some of you are probably bringing up the fact that that's what you get from buying in China and ham radio dude, didn't you do an article or an episode months ago that said, Hey, be careful what you order from wish because there's some fake stuff. I absolutely did. So why don't we jump over to the U S market? Adding to the list of different battery capacities for the UV9R Plus, we have the Merkit BL9 battery, which is the one I do have here, and it's advertised as 2200 milliamp hour true capacity. So we'll take that into consideration and we'll test this in just a moment, but let's check out one or two more. You can see this radio here from Rattel Communications, which is showing that there's a 2500 milliamp hour rating. The question starts to become, what are you actually getting for your money? Are you paying extra money for the bigger numbers, but you don't know what they mean? That could be the case, and that's probably where they're trying to get a lot of us, is basically by deceiving us into believing whatever we read. I will say there was also a battery out there that I'm going to test in the future, and we'll see how it is, but it was the UB10R, and they're advertising it as 22,000 milliamp hours or 22 amp hour battery life. That'll be for another day. Let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to test this battery and actually test it. The tool that I'm going to use today to test the battery capacity is going to be this continuous drain or continuous current battery tester, if you will. Essentially what it does is what I said. Uh, you will plug in a 
power cable into here, which is gonna control things like the fan and the screen here. And then you're gonna hook your battery up to the negative and positive battery terminals. What's gonna happen then is you're gonna set your amperage and this battery is gonna drain at that continue amperage, continuous amperage you set. Uh, after it's fully discharged or discharged to a point where it shouldn't be discharged anymore, uh, we will get our amp hour rating. And I will say I did test this on a bio -NO battery. I determined with a bio -NO battery that this thing is fairly accurate. It's not going to be 100% accurate. And if you do want that, you have to pay for more expensive test equipment. So to get started, I have the Model BL9 Baofeng battery from Merkit. And I just want to see what this battery capacity really is and see if it lives up to the claims. So I'm going to go ahead first and I'm going to turn on a multimeter and I'm going to set it to 12 volts. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to hit positive to positive, negative to negative to get an idea or show you at least that it's fully charged. And at fully charged, I am at what looked like 8.35 volts. Very good. I quickly wanted to show you that I did change a couple of things. You could see these leads right here. These leads now have the alligator clips connected to the post on the load tester and the bare wires are exposed onto the battery. Now I recognize that this isn't the best thing to do and as long as these wires don't move, it should still produce a consistent result. In the future though, I will find a way to have a better connection to the battery terminals as these alligator clips wouldn't fit onto the terminals. To get started too, the first thing you'll always do is you're gonna hold down this button right here, which will reset everything so it shows zero, 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 zero. I did wanna show a couple other just kind of things here. If I continue to hit this button that I talked about, you'll see that it says less than 0.0.0. .0. And I am at that point telling this battery to drain all the way to zero, which can be kind of uh, possibly dangerous for the battery. And I say it dangerous in the sense that you never want to fully discharge one of these uh, lithium ion batteries as I'm understood. But here we are, and I'm going to use this screen now. You'll see we still have 8.32 volts and 0, 0.00 amps. I'm going to increase this to a level. Now, technically, they say that this is a 2200 milliamp hour battery. And so I'm going to actually just increase this to basically where we're doing one amp of constant draw. That's going to take me just a second to get it. But you can see here I got to 1.04 amps. This bottom button here is a fine tune. And it's all the way down. So maybe I want to bring this down a little bit. You can see I just have to work on the fine tuning aspect of things and then possibly continue to bring this up a little bit here. And I'm at 1.06, 1.04, 1.02. 1 and you might see a little fluctuation there. I'm going to leave it right there, right about one amp. You can see it's fluctuating a little bit. We could already see our voltage went down to 7.95, which in my testing, in my prior experience, that hasn't been a problem. But as you could already see, it's it's already advertising 0 0.01 amp hours. And here's the timer. So we're going to let this sit and we'll come back. And what I'll do when we come back is I'll tell you what the rest of my results were because I did already run this test three or four times. It has been one hour and 39 minutes and you can see now I have zero amps being drawn and zero volts. That's because this battery is dead. Now we were doing a constant drain at one amp and we totally, or in total, we show that the battery capacity of this battery is actually 1.65 amps or 1650 milliamp hours. This is actually somewhat consistent with the rest of my results, which I do want to show you in just a second. But before I show you this, I want to make a couple of notes. People are going to argue that this battery is used and therefore the battery is uh, not a good test. You need to test a brand new battery and you're probably right. But I do want to mention that I've only used this battery a handful of times at the most. And so I don't think that that should have a huge factor in the overall total result. And I am led to believe that 1650 milliamp hours is probably pretty close to what this is. Let's go ahead and take a look at those results. Real quick, I just want to show you one more thing here. No matter how many times I hit this battery on the terminals, nothing happens because this battery is completely dead. Now in the future, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll test how long it takes to fully charge a battery that's dead like this. You'll see five test results above me. 
And they're all pretty similar, all close, except for test three, which I think I'm going to explain first. What I think had happened here is I had the leads coming off of the tester and they were placed onto the battery. And prior to actually taking the leads off and putting the battery back on the charger to run more tests, I didn't confirm that there was no voltage left. So I don't think test three fully drained. So I would consider that a null or a bad, uh, a bad test, if you will. Now, what I did notice though is test one, test two, and test four are very close and test five is up at 1650. I would consider these all very close in the sense that, yeah, they're all above 1600 milliamp hours, but they're all below 1700 milliamp hours. And I would conclude that it's most likely that the battery that was provided with the Merkit advertises 2200 milliamp hours is probably more like 1650 milliamp hours. Uh, I would be more than happy to test more of these batteries in the future and to get a better idea of if this is a one battery issue or a multi battery issue, I would not even be opposed to maybe getting three or four different batteries of the same kind from the same supplier. But I wanted you to see those results. And even when they're saying it's true 2200 milliamp hours, you necessarily can't believe everything you read on the internet. And I just wanted to give a couple of notes here to conclude this episode. When I purchase these radios, I'm fully aware, a hundred percent aware of what I'm purchasing. And I'm completely aware that I'm not going to get things like 16,000, 20,000, 24,000 milliamp hours or amp hours of battery life. I'm fully aware that a UV5R is not going to do crossband repeat naturally or natively. I buy these radios so that I could help show other people what these radios can and can't really do. I don't want somebody who's just getting into radio or has been in radio for a while and might not have a lot of money to get ripped off by some of these, these companies and these people selling these products. Now, all the companies that I've named in this video, I have no disrespect for. I just think it would be more honest if people were giving honest numbers to the quality in product that they sell with it. If you do have any questions about battery life or radio features, please feel free to ask. And I will also mention, I'll be doing the same test on the Yezu batteries in the future. I'll be doing the test on the Alliance HD one in the future and quite a few other batteries as well. And then when I do my radio HT reviews in the future, I'll actually just include those in the reviews. Thanks for checking out the channel. I hope you had a pleasure watching this. I, I hope you learned something and maybe it'll help you make a better decision when purchasing a radio until next time I'm ham radio dude 73. And if you haven't already, don't forget to check out Monday and Thursday night ham radio, both at their respected days.